some people could say, you're lifting up a man too much. You know, it says that the fivefold ministry are the gifts that are given to the church, you know. And it's, it takes a humble route for someone to know that I am in that fivefold ministry and I'm a gift given to the church, but at the same time to have a humility about that because I'm just as human as anybody else, amen? So there's, there's a humility behind this thing. When you're up here in the pulpit, we speak the truths and, and we speak the, the oracles of Jesus Christ and we bring the revelation of the word of God, but at the same time, we have to hold ourselves very high. And, and when we fall, even as ministers, we have to be quick to, to repent, amen? And, and that's one thing that I'm very quick with. I don't let the sun go down. I can't. My spirit doesn't let me. When I mess up, when I fall, when I fail as a human, as a husband, as a father, as, a, as a, a, an employee of somebody, you understand? I have to be quick to repent to keep me in that, that, that level of, of spirituality, amen? Because if you don't, if you start being hard on yourself, that's when the enemy comes in. The enemy loves for for us to get hard on ourselves, you understand? Now, I'm not talking about the kind of hard on yourself, meaning discipline, because there is such a thing as getting more holy. You need to be more holy. Wherever holiness you're at right now, you need to go more holy. You understand that? We're never going to hit enough. Never think that you're holy and you met it and that's it, Lord, I've arrived. No, you haven't arrived. None of us have arrived. I have not arrived. My wife has not arrived until Jesus Christ returns. Then we're going to have full revelation and understanding them. Amen? But right now we speak in part is what the word says. It's a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. You understand? Those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians. So it's a good thing to be humbled by that. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, as we bring this word, Father, Father, let it bring light to each one of us because it is the power of the gospel. As we're coming closer to, to Easter and and, and, and the resurrection and understanding that there must be a death before a resurrection. Father, I want this Easter Sunday to be a true Easter where people know true salvation, Lord. Father, help us to bring true salvation here in this church. Not the watered down one where if you just come and you can live your life, whatever you want, and then you can go on. And if you just say Jesus, no, 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 no. We're talking about real change in a person's life. Or when they enter in, they never go back because they've been totally convinced and they're totally submitted, Father. Help us to get to that revelation today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. And the church said, amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. Any of you study people, you know that 1 John is not an easy book. Because 1 John says that if you sin, you know, I don't know, it's people that come in to, to salvation no longer sin. We don't sin, but if you do sin, we have an advocate in Jesus Christ. But you, you understand, we don't have, Christians should not have a life of, of, uh, of intentional missing the mark. Does that make sense? We're not like unbelievers, are we? We watch them unbelievers, and we watch them, we're just like, man, they go on and they go do whatever we want. They, 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 it doesn't bother them about, uh, you know, hurting the Lord. It doesn't bother them about uh, hurting the Holy Ghost, it doesn't bother them like it bothers us, does it? There's just some things that we just can't do anymore, right? Isn't it? I mean, you could try to, but you're going to be convicted, and then you're going to have about five or six believers saying, hey, hey, what you doing? You know what I mean? And then, you know, the church, the, the modern church now, they, well, no one can judge each other. No, 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 we judge each other within the church. That's what we're here for. We're here for, I expect you, if you ever feel something about them, and trust me, people do, trust me, they don't have no problem telling the pastor, you know what I mean? Well, I don't, I don't know, agree with this, or I don't know about this, you know? We should be like that. We should be. It keeps... ...sure we're speaking truth, and we want to make sure that what we're doing is correct, and then at the same time, we want to make sure that uh, we're, we're experiencing real gospel. Amen? I feel like I'm a little loud. Am I a little loud? No? Okay, good. All right. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. 1 John chapter 5, verse 9. If you're there, say amen. I'm reading out of the King James this morning. 
love the King James. If, if you want to read, if you want to study, study the King James. Learn to understand the King James. Learn to understand uh, what it is. And then when you want to study it, thank you. Thank you. When you want to study, use the Amplified, use all the other ones. But good, King James is a good one to return to. Amen. If you're there, say amen. 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 First John chapter 5. Ready? Here we go. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Amen? I mean, right there, right there. Just boop. The Holy Spirit just goes, man, see that? You got to be careful what everyone is saying. And you got to know what exactly the Bible is saying. Amen? Because people are going to come out and say some weird stuff. And, and, and. They may be Christian, but they may be misled. Do you understand? They may be Christians, but they're speaking out of a filter of being rejected by some church that they believe did them so wrong. you understand? And then all of a sudden, they have this spirit of rejection on them. And this spirit of rejection makes them say things about the church. Do you understand? That makes sense. If we receive the witness of men, you need to know that the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. We are all his sons. Even if you're a woman, you're his son. Do you understand? You have, to, you have to get that into you. This is not about gender. This is about a position. A son has a position. Us as males and females, we have positions in God. And here is the witness, the true witness of God. Ten. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. Do you see that? And I got to go slow here. There's a lot here. He that believes on the Son of God has the what? The witness in himself. See, that's why, and that's why it's easy to tell whether a person is really come to believe and, and know and trust in Jesus Christ, and then a person who's just coming because somebody forced them, or they're thinking about it, or they're not sure about it. Do you understand? Those that really believe in the Son of God, there is an inner witness that begins to speak to him and begins to tell him and begins to check him and begins to stop him and begins... That's just the normal life. You don't have to really be told often by people what's good and bad when you're a Christian. The Holy Ghost himself is always talking to you. Now, before you were a believer in Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost was the one drawing you in. Do you understand? That, that, that's what it is. The Holy Spirit, he may not be in you, but he's out there and he's putting a, some type of inner siren inside each one of us that just draws us, it draws us to some change. It draws us all of a sudden to church. The flesh don't want to be in church. And it makes up weird stuff like, well, I can get saved here at the home and I can do that. No, no, no. No, the Bible says don't forsake the assembling of the saints. In other words, don't not go to church. Don't do that. But you see, we, we come up with some stuff and we come up with some things. And before you know a Christian that don't read their Bible and don't have good ministers, they start saying, that's true, you can get saved in your room. And I'm telling you right now, you can come to make a decision in your room, but true salvation is when you confess it before men and Jesus says, I'll confess it before my Father. Amen? See, that's the real thing. The decision may have been done in your bedroom, and the decision may have been done, but it's not till you come into the congregation and the witness of all the people who have the witness inside of them, and when you come out and you make decision, then the Lord says, okay, you've done something now. Before, it was a good idea that could have been robbed from you if you didn't make it here. Does that make sense? So we can go all make all kinds of decisions. How many of you on January 1st made a decision? Man, I'm going to start working out. See, we can make all kinds of decisions. All kinds of things can happen in our bedroom. All kinds of can, decisions can be made while we're driving. But it's not until you do it in a, in a, 
in a visible way among everybody else because then we're going to look on you and say, all right, he's made the decision. And guess what? We've made the decision. So by nature, we're going to know if you really did make the decision. And we're going to know if you were just giving lip service. Don't we? Yeah, we know, don't we? I mean, I can tell right off the bat, y'all should be able to also. Not only that, you should be able to tell within yourselves if you made the real decision or not, if you're still like, you know, <laughs> testing the water. Because there's testing the water. Testing the water doesn't mean salvation. Salvation means you're like, whoosh, I'm in. Everybody, hey, this is what I believe. Those people that were coming up here, that's a sign of, of salvation. Because it's no more about what are people going to think of me. It's more about what's God going to do for me. And they end up coming up here. Do you understand? There's something about that. See, there gets to a point in your life where it's no longer about what other people are thinking, but it gets to about, am I pleasing him? Has he told me to do something, and have I done it in the name of Jesus? Has he told me to get rid, or has he told me to go speak, or has he told me, and have I done that? That right there is the life of the believer. Why? Because the witness is speaking inside of you, and he never stops. Matter of fact, in your dreams, he'll keep on talking to you if you allow him. My wife, she gets lots of dreams. I don't because I forget them in, in the morning, you know what I mean? I'm just terrible at it. The Lord knows he's got to talk to me another way. He's like, man, I can't talk to you in your sleep. You're, you're out of there, you know? You're in third REM sleep. There's no way, you know? But he knows how to speak to us in the middle. The Lord is always He's always talking. And if you're listening to that voice, that's proof that you have made your decision. Amen. I, we got to start speaking true salvation. I'm talking about real salvation. I know people that come in the church and they've been coming for months, but they are not saved. They haven't made the decision. They're enjoying it. They're liking it. There's something about it. And we love on them. And we're blessing them. And we're, but we're all waiting for them to come up here and make a decision. Isn't that the truth? I mean, we watch them for months, and we're seeing them, and we, because we were there too, weren't we? I mean, we were there too in that, in that bench, and I was like, man, oh, man, I feel like my feet want to move. Why do I want to go up there? Why is it, you know, that's the Holy Spirit. He's just drawing you because there's decision to be made in front of people. That's the only way you're going to know a true believer is he's not worried about people anymore. We make decisions and we follow the Holy Ghost because he lives in us. It's like having somebody right next to us. Amen. True salvation has the inner witness, has that witness inside of him. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness. Anybody tell me who's the witness? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Or the Holy Ghost. Man, that's the witness inside of you. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, aren't they? Those who are kind of sometimes led by the Spirit, did I say that? Those who are, man, kind of in a little bit, but then they're not sure and they come out, out they are the son. Did it say something like that? No, it says those who are led by the Spirit. They are the sons. You know what's interesting? I mean, that verse could have could have said those that accepted Jesus Christ and are led by the son. That means this is a proof that if you're a son of God and you've really accepted Jesus, you will be led by the Holy Spirit. If you do not know what I'm talking about, you need true salvation. And it's not too late. The Lord has not returned. There is still, the Lord is still out there. We still have the believers out there. If I'm not speaking to you, I know you're thinking of somebody in your family right now. I mean, I almost see the names go up, you know. I can almost see the prayers. I knew, I knew you wouldn't say, yeah, you're right. If you have to decide, and, and you know what, this is going to be real hard sometimes because some of these might be your own children. There might be your own family. Man, that's the, that's the hardest. My little girl, she's sitting up here right now, but there was a time in her life where she wasn't showing signs. 
she was showing signs of what she had heard her daddy talk about, but there was no decision. You don't think that, that kind of wants to fit me? Well, no, my daughter was saved during that time. Her life didn't show it. Her life did not show it in those moments. Just because she had a mental understanding of Jesus, that's not a guarantee that she's going in. There has to be a change. And the day that she met the real Jesus, all of a sudden she's in church up here talking, and you can't separate her from the love of God. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Decisions, decisions. And we have to come to the reality of that because if we do not, we're going to soften our, 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 our haste. We're going to soften that, 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 oh, what, what's the word I wish I had on? Somebody gave it to me. You gave me that word that I was looking for on Wednesday. You're going to lose that edge. You're going to lose that because you're going to think, well, he's, he's saved. He's, yeah, you're going to sympathize. And you're going to think, it, well, you know, they, they said Jesus, my, my, my son, my, my nephew, my, my, they, they said Jesus. But you're looking at their life and there ain't no Jesus. If you keep like that, you know, you're going to lose them. Because Jesus, whenever he was talking about the banquet, he said, compel them to come to the banquet. Compel them. In other words, it's got to be a point where it's like, mijo, mijo, I know you know Jesus, but you're not saved, son. You, there's got to be a compelling. When you make a decision, we know how you're going to look, but right now you can't fake anybody. It's got to be that kind of talk in them where they are purposely deciding, I don't want to. And that's almost where you got to get in. You know what? Tell me, don't play on the half road. Just tell me you're not ready. I ain't ready. Then there's your decision right there. When you're ready, the church is here. They got to get a reality of it. Don't allow them to think they're in this uh, false grace. Well, well, you know, my, my parents, they believed in Jesus, but I'm still living the way I am. But, you know, I come to church, so, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I'm saying, no, 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 your life ain't, no, no. If you really get either right now you're saying, no way, this is too hard, and you can play that game, you know, maybe, 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 make it in, maybe not. Or you're getting a reality of it right now, and you're saying, this ain't playing around anymore. Does that make sense? This is true salvation. This is the kind of energy that the apostles and the disciples had when they were going around because they knew. This is the kind of energy that Paul had when he came over. If you remember Philip and and had got some people saved, and then it says that Peter and, and Paul showed up, and all of a sudden they were like, hey, uh, and it said the disciples were there, people that had made a decision, and he said, hey, did, did you receive the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, no, no, we haven't even ever heard of the Holy Ghost. Man, get over here. Let me lay hands on you because you need true salvation. The Holy Spirit witnessing inside of you is the true salvation. If you don't have that, you're not saved. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness in him. He that believes not God has made him a liar because he believes not in the record that God gave of his Son. You see, even though a person's giving lip service, if the life is not there, they are not believing in the message, the testimony or the record that was written. Verse 11. And this is the record. So he makes it real clear that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. It's in his son. You have to remember that Jesus said, uh, I'm in you, you are in me. Remember he said that? I'm in you and you're in me. In other words, it's, it's like being married. You can't just separate yourself from your husbands and your wives, can you? you can, I mean, for maybe a day it might be good, you know what I mean? But after a long time, you're like, man, I need to see my family. I need to get back to my children, back to my husband, back to my... Isn't it like that? That's because you can't separate that stuff unless there's no relationship. If there's no relationship, oh, you can. You can go weeks, days, months without a word being spoken. Oh, it can go a long time. That's the proof, isn't it? Isn't that the proof? That's the proof when you know a man, man yeah, they got it together or whew, there's something there. There's something a block. There's a block there. It's the same way with your spiritual husband, Jesus Christ. 
when you have married him, you are faithful to your husband. And you got to say that, I, I speak that even to men too, because I'm not talking about a gender, I'm talking about position. Remember I said that? Men, we are the bride of Jesus Christ. You got to get past your, your physical. You know, you know. If, if it's bothering you, you know, just say, shut up, man. Let me, let me, you understand? If that's bothering you, you, you need to get spiritual. It's a position. We are at the right hand of the Father. We are at the right hand of Jesus Christ. He has married us. In other words, we are in, now in relationship. And the only way that you can speak to Jesus is through that Holy Ghost living inside of you, living inside. I know many times we look up and we say, Father, and we, we start looking up. And do you know that the word says, though, he's nearer than that. I'm so much more nearer than that. Sometimes doing this can give us a sense of, you're over there. And remember, God is in his abode, and Jesus sits at his right hand. It's true. They are over there. But he did not leave us alone, did he? So we got to start looking inward instead of upward. Does that make sense? And that, that, that can hit a religious person right there. Who do you mean, God? I mean, I'm telling you right now, it says the witness is in you. You looking up, you're too far. You looking up, trying to wait for something to fall, you're too far. You don't have him in you then. If you have him in you, you know that he's in you. You know. You know it. Not because someone preached it to you, not just because, but because you received it and you said it, and all of a sudden he makes a bode with you. He makes a home. An abode, a home, makes home within you. Amen. Nothing better than God making a home right here. Hallelujah. This is true salvation. This is the real deal. Watch this, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. I mean, this is evidence right here. Whoever's got the Son has life. And he that does not have the Son of God hath what? No life. Like my wife says, period. <laughs> Nothing in between. Nothing in between. I've known young people that grew up with ministers. I mean, I, I am one. My family has been in the ministry all their life. That didn't just graft me into the family just because my dad was a, was a minister, my mother was a minister. That didn't just put me in. Mm -mm. I had to come to a realization and believe and I had to open my heart, or I would have been just another son gone to hell while my parents made it into heaven. And that's parents that were in the church, much less parents that are not in the church. Some of you have parents that have never stepped in the church. Man, that's a grace given to you. I, I mean, that's an amazing thing for you to find God. Because in my little world, in my understanding, you know, my parents have always been there. They gave me an understanding. But when you get a touch of God, Man, I've seen my wife, when she came to know God, there was no turning back in me. She had the witness in her. That's true salvation. When you have Jesus, you have life. When you don't have Jesus, you ain't got no life. You're trying to live. You're trying to make it. Trying to struggle. You're trying to be rich. Trying to be successful. And here's all of us over here just praising the Lord, and the Lord is just adding to us. Does that mean? Amen. I'm not speaking, I'm boasting in what the promises of God that are yes and amen. You can have those, but it only comes with a real change, a true salvation of opening up, and you in your heart finally saying, Lord, I'm done. Here I am. Ugly and all. Ugly and all. I'm messed up. I got stuff in me right now. I probably shouldn't even have in my system. But here I am. You take me. You whatever you want to do. You just do it with me. There's a sincerity to that. When you do that and when you open up like that, you know what God does? Woo! Boom. Ah. There's something to that. Many of you know what I'm talking about because you've experienced it. 
Some of you don't know yet because you want it, but you're not sure. And others are just completely rejecting. The latter two are not saved. It's the first one. Man, I'm trying to make this clear. I need you to scan across your family right now, and I need you to start saying, yeah, you, you, no, no, you, you, yeah, no, no. And that's going to tell you exactly who you need to be going to. Don't let that, the, the days of, of, of uh, time now where you're being politically correct, well, we don't want to judge them. No, mm, let them know they're already judged. We ain't judging them. They stand against the word of God. Don't be on that side. Be on this side where you're not judged. Be on this side where your sin is not, not remembered anymore. Come on to this side so when you do sin, you, man, it's nothing more than a repentance. That's it, but you didn't walk out. If you're on the other side, that's called a sin that leads to death. There's a sin that doesn't lead to death. Man, look at that. <laughs> I'm going to teach y'all some word today. I'm going to teach y'all some word today. There's a sin that doesn't lead to death, and then there's sin that leads to death. When you sin, grace abounds. But that other person is acting like a believer but really isn't, when they sin, there's no grace abounding. You understand? Whoa, this is big. This is big. I don't know about you, but I mess up a lot. I need to be on the side that's gracing me, abounding farther than my sin. I do not want to be on the other side. I mean, I want every failure of my life just completely covered by Jesus. Because I know it's not going to stop. It's going to continue on until Jesus returns. Now, I'm going to work the best that I can listening to the Holy Spirit, but we're all going to fall. We can't say that we don't sin anymore, right? I can't say that. Hallelujah. Jesus. Where am I? Verse 12. <laughs> Verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God does not have life. I'm going to show you a quick scripture right here. Just write it down. It's Philippians 3.3. 3. Look what it says here in the King James first. Watch this. For we are the circumcision. If you don't know what that means, all that means is you're a Christian. Okay, don't worry about all that other stuff. If you don't understand what circumcision means right now, then, then, then we'll talk about it later. All right? Because we're not talking about the real flesh circumcision. We're talking about circumcision of the heart, right? In other words, when your heart has been all that ugly has been cut off around your heart, and you can love people again. You know what I'm talking about? You remember that time in your life when you couldn't love, you couldn't trust nobody? When you didn't trust nobody, you didn't love again. You were like, mm -mm, that, I love that last, that, that's the last dude I'll ever love right there. That's the last woman I'll ever love right there. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when you come to Jesus, that heart opens up, and you're able to love freely. I mean, you're able to love freely despite all the issues and the hurts that people have done to you. It's like people will hurt you and you still love. You still love. They crush you. They, they stomp all over you. They word cursing you. You still love. You still love. Because that's all you have living inside of you. Amen? We're the Christian. We're the circumcision. Watch this. This is what real Christians do. We worship God in the what? I'm not talking about my outside. I'm not talking about my, when I worship, when you see me up here, you know, you know, doing my thing, you know, that's not my outside. That is a result of what happened in my inner man. If I was in my outer man, I'd do something real cool like this. You know what I mean? You know, make sure I don't look too ridiculous. You know what I mean? Do the one hand, the receiving hand, you know. But when it comes from the inside, you start to dance like David danced. Do you remember that story? It says David had the Ark of the Covenant in, and all of a sudden he danced like a riot. Who crazy? I don't know what he was doing. It was so crazy that his own wife said, you look ridiculous. What are you doing? Go read the story. His wife said, what's wrong with you? You're king. You ain't supposed to be acting this way. I said, man, watch me, woman. <laughs> that was a result from an inner man worship. Man, 
on the inside. You don't want to squish them. Look what it says. For we worship God in the spirit, not on the outside. I know everybody worshiping from the outside. I'll tell you right now. I, I know. I know. I mean, when I'm in services outside here, wherever, I can tell the true worshipers that are really coming. Oh, you, you can tell. You can tell, and you can tell when you're just like, you know, you know, man, I'm going to go ahead and raise my hand. No, you're in the flesh, man. you got to let that, that breath of life come out of you. Open up to the Lord. Let him come on the inside. Amen. It says, we worship God in the spirit. That's what causes this. You know, Chris up there, he'll tell you, you know, lift your hands. And, and he's trying to get you in a place because there is something about, you know, all right, man, let me just give it all. Because now, you, now you're in a position you ain't used to. You know what I mean? You ain't used to that. There is something about that. But all that is there to make it come out from here. It says, we worship God in the spirit. These are the true Christians, right? This is real Christian. Real deal. Bonafide Christian. We worship God in the spirit. And we rejoice in Jesus Christ. You say, Jesus, we just get happy. People that ain't saved, they're like, why do they get so happy? Talking about, oh, gee, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, we just, just say Jesus. We're holly, amen, amen. And you know, we're there. Let someone say Jesus at work, amen. Hey, you want to? Isn't it true? You know, all of a sudden you recognize, oh, you, uh, hey, man, brother, brother, you know. Brother, sister, immediate, is immediate bond between, you may not even know them, but there's a bond all of a sudden you know because you have the same daddy. That's because the spirit lives in you. The sign of not being a Christian is when you're uncomfortable around Christians. If you're uncomfortable around us, then you haven't received Jesus yet. You may be wanting to, you may be on your way to, you may be just almost there, Pastor. But a real Christian all of a sudden has a draw to the church. Y'all can't get enough of me. And I can't get enough of you. I wish we was here every day. We had that, uh, I wish we didn't need to work and you just come here and eat and, you know, just, you know, this and what. And... My gosh. That's what Christianity does. We'll go play softball out there, come back in, you know, go do our own things out there, make our own bowling teams. I don't know, you know what I mean? I mean, we got to get to this point, amen? But we're just living life together, right? Because I can't get enough of you. Well, there's a song, isn't that? <laughs> That's the sign of a believer. You got to be there. You wake up, you're tired. Yeah, I know, but I got to, you know? I mean, it's a sign. We worship in spirit. We rejoice in Jesus Christ. And we have no confidence. Say that with me. No confidence. Say it again. No confidence. And say the last part with me. In the flesh. This is a believer. You know how to worship in spirit. You rejoice at the name of Jesus. And you have no confidence in the flesh. It means you have completely abandoned yourself. It means you have completely abandoned who you are. The old Tim is dead. He's not alive anymore. He don't exist anymore. That one man that used to lollygag around thinking he was believed or not believed and jumping from place to place and could never sink down and could never commit, all of a sudden, that man is gone. Because it comes with true salvation. I put no more confidence in Tim Lopez. No more confidence in that. I put my full confidence and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And I stay there. These are the signs of a real believer, amen? Now I want you to go look at the other side. Go back to your families. The ones that are sitting at the house right now. Drinking mimosas and who knows where. Beating the lions at Esperanzas to get the meal before all us church people come out and rent and, and fill everything up. Right now they're enjoying it because when we get out of church, we're hungry, you know? Go look at the restaurant at 12 at 1. All the church people, that's when you know the church people. They're all there. <laughs> we came out of church. These are the signs. We put no confidence in the flesh. We've totally abandoned of what we think success is, 
We've totally abandoned what we think victory means, what we think it means to be in peace. We've totally abandoned of what we think it means to get to success and to get to being in a place where you're just at peace in your heart. We've totally abandoned those other ways. Chasing after money. Chasing after money. Christians don't do that. Because we know the word of God says either you serve God or you serve mammon, which is money. But you can't serve them both. Christians don't do that. We don't trust in worldly riches. But yet at the same time it says my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. We don't trust in our riches, but at the same time, the Lord says, man, if I feed the sparrow, if I feed the bird out there, how much more am I going to feed you? You understand? This is true salvation, where a life is continually adhering and trusting in the Lord, in everything. Maybe we can't pay the bill. The Lord will show up. Or like my dad says, Abraham, the Lord will. He, he likes to say it too, like the old English, the Lord will provide, son. I remember one time he got me good, and I'm a pastor. And I was saying somebody said, son, the Lord will provide. Man, I was like, oh, Lord, I'm a pastor too. That's right, Dad. That's right. The Lord will provide me, man. You know? Man, we all got to have some, you know, someone to remind us. Amen? The Lord will provide. How are we going to get this paid off? The Lord will provide. As simple as that, yeah, if you're still trying to struggle, you ain't saved then. If you're still trying to struggle with that, you need to develop into that. Jump on in the water. The Lord will provide. If not, I die and go to heaven. You know what I mean? And I'll wait for all of y'all to show up. I mean, it has to be that kind of black and white when it comes to salvation. If you don't see that total difference and change, then you need to compel them. You need to do whatever it takes I mean, they need to almost, you need to be a point where they're just like, oh, Lord, here they come again. Yeah, that's right. You invited me. You don't want me here? Don't invite me no more because, you know, this is what I represent. And you know that's why y'all don't want me here because y'all ain't representing them and I'm representing them. That's why y'all aren't always going to be invited to every party. If you're still being invited, you ain't Christian enough. I mean, it should be a point where you're being invited and they're like, oh, Lord, they're going to get up. And, man, I'll tell you what. Everybody knows that about my dad, i tell you that right now. I mean, my dad, everybody knows my dad's going to get up and pray at the awkwardest moment. Like, he can pray now. Okay, okay. All right, here we go. You know what I mean? I mean, it should be like that. Your life should be something where they're like, okay, here they come. Man, when are they going to do their thing? I mean, it should be like that. Your life should be like that. You should be getting on everybody's nerves that ain't saved. I mean, if you're getting on the enemy's nerves, you should be getting on anybody who's following him or who anybody who ain't come in yet either. Because that'll reveal the truth. It shows the truth. Amen? I'm trying to show you true salvation. I'm talking about true salvation. Look what it says in the Amplified, the same scripture. For we Christians are the true circumcision who worship God in spirit and by the spirit of God and exalt and glory and pride ourselves in Jesus Christ. I mean, that's where we stand. How are you going to get Jesus is going to handle it? Man, I know that, but how's it going? I don't know Jesus is going to, you know what I mean? It says, and put no confidence or dependence on what we are in the flesh. Christians don't do that. We don't put confidence in our own selves, amen? We don't put confidence in what, what your upbringing was. You don't put in your gift, do you understand? Because what's going to happen is you're going to get to the point, Lord, Lord, I did this and I did this. I prophesied in your name, I did this. The Lord said, I don't know you. You put your confidence in your gift. You didn't put your confidence in me. That's what that scripture's saying. You th 
thought all your gifts and your talents was doing great, and it was much more simpler than that. Oh, man. My God. This is true salvation. I'm trying to offer you real salvation. Because I don't know if you're going to hear, I mean, I'm sure you will. I know there's other churches out there, but there's not a lot of them. They're out there, just like us. You'd have never thought you'd have found this in the corner in the armpit of Fort Worth. <laughs> but all of a sudden, the little oracle is right here. I'm telling you, you the, the places where God is moving, you won't see them in a spectacular way. The spectacular is for all the eyes, and all everybody's pleased with it, and we're all good with it. Amen? But I'm telling you, real believers, they shake things up. We're peculiar. There's a peculiarness to you. It says, and we put no confidence or dependence on what we are in the flesh. Watch this. And on outward privileges and physical advantages and external experience. Well, my experience with church is, eh, you already be wrong. If you had a bad experience in church, I, remember, you're dealing with people. But you don't go losing your salvation and not go to church just because you had a bad experience with a person. You don't do that. I mean, I don't see, you know, most people, you got somebody at work you don't like, but you're not just quitting work. You know, you, you got to get your, your means from that. Same way with church. You don't just quit. You don't just quit the church just because somebody didn't say something, right? Or they said something to you and it hurt you. And you knew it was true and you walked off. Trust me, the next church is going to be there again. The Lord will see to it. Hallelujah. It's true salvation. It's better to be on this side. It's better to be on the salvation side where you're, you're, you're confident. That's why me and my wife get son of your confident. That's why we can look because we're identifying ourselves with Jesus and Jesus alone and what his word says. And we're allowing the light to get inside of us. I mean, if I go live my life doing dumb things, it's going to be real hard for me to preach on a Sunday. Don't you think? Or I just have to have a seared conscience, and I can preach and live the life that I want. I mean, let's think about it this way. Golly. If I'm no different than you, how come you couldn't judge me if I go to the Lord? But yet them other ones that are doing the same thing, I guarantee y'all would judge me. I guarantee Pastor Jim, y'all know what, y'all know what's going on. You know what I mean? Y'all would be judging me with a quickness. But yet, the other ones, oh, you're just letting up this salvation again and there and everything. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. For some reason, we want to dumb down the other side. And we can't. We have to keep the gospel and what it is. And either they're in or they're out. The life will either show it or the life won't show it. Does that make sense? Amen. Why didn't y'all tell me that's when you sang it? Thank you, babe. Amen. I'm starting to sweat up here. I ain't got time. Let's go back to 1 John. I'm almost done. Y'all are almost through. You're almost through. You're doing good, all right? I know, I know. I know exactly what it means to be right where you're at. Yeah, we're almost there. 513. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life. All this stuff I've been talking about, these things are all written so that you know, not so you can guess or possibly the same. This is a guaranteed judge a person. Do they have the life in them or they don't? This is how you know. Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. We were at Wednesday. We were talking Wednesday about this and we we're like, does a thorn bush produce grapes? Does the thorn bush say, yeah, come over here, grab a grape. You know, I'm a grape. I really am a grape. You don't look like a grape. Because I'm a grape. You know, I, I, I'm looking at grape, but you don't look like a grape. 
Yeah, I'm a grape. Look, I'm a grape, you know. Look, I'm a grape, man. I, I, got, I, I got my grape when I was over there on my own, you know, and, and I'm still a grape now. Yeah, but you ain't over here where all the grapes are at. I, well, you don't have to. Hey, you ain't got to get, you ain't got to, just to be a grape, you don't have to be with all the rest of them. I can be a grape all by myself. And... No, no, you're a thorn bush. Mm-hmm. How are you going to judge me? Well, you're a thorn bush. I mean, isn't that the life of the believer and the unbeliever? No, we're Christians. We're, uh, no, no, I don't think you are. You know? yeah, but I, I, Jesus, look, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, but the devil say Jesus, and they're still devils. The devils are saying Jesus, and they remain devils. You, are, I don't know. You're just saying Jesus. Talk about true salvation. Man, raise the bar. Raise the bar in your own life, and then raise it when you're looking at others. I mean, the worst thing the world can do is for the church to start going silent and saying, well, I guess we all saved. Everybody's Jesus, you know. I guess we're all saved. The whole world is saved now. And so what are we going to do? We're going to stop preaching. And we're going to stop telling others, and we're going to stop bringing conviction. Why? Because we've learned to coexist, and we, I guess we're just all good, you know. We're all good. You say Jesus, all right, you ain't living it, but we're all good, you know. You, know, you understand? We're going to lose that. This is a strategy of the enemy. It says there will be wolves in sheep's clothing. In other words, there's going to be thorn bushes with dressed as a grape. I'm a grape. I'm a grape. I'm a grape. You know? Oh no, you don't look like a grape. You don't act like a grape either. Yeah, I'm a grape. Look, I'm a grape. You know? I don't know. All those grapes are over here, and you, you still. I don't know about you. Yeah, I'm a grape. Look, you know. I mean, that's what a wolves in sheep's clothing is. It says in the end days there will be many of them, and they will be in the church. Oh, man. I mean, think about this now. How many people are thinking that they're saved, but they're not? Because somebody from IBC didn't come out and say, no, bro, you're not in. You're not a great. You're not one of us. You're not a sheep. Come on into the family. Give your life to the Lord. If they reject it, they reject it. You walk on, but don't create something saying, well, uh, they said Jesus. No, 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 don't create, keep that line where it is. It's the power of the gospel. That's the power of the gospel. The world will judge you. You're going to be judged by the world saying, man, you're judgmental people. Yeah, that's right. Christians are judgmental people. We can see it all. We, we, well, we can read you up and down. We have the spirit of God in us. The world knows Christians to be the most judgmental people. And you know what I say? That's right. Because we have the spirit of God in us, and you don't. I'm trying to put the confidence back in the church, amen? Because, yeah, because you've been feeling this way all this time, but what happened, the world and government and the world is trying to silence you, and, and you know, Jesus, come, well, I guess we're just going to be in the, I guess we're going to be, no, uh I'm trying to get you out of that so you can come back to those old roots where we came back and said, no, you in, you're not. You need to come here now if you want to get saved. If not, you're going to hell. Period. Your life will be a hell all the way up until the hell. You'll have no life. Do you want a life? You want success? Come in with Jesus. You'll have life. You'll have success. The Lord will provide for you. You won't have to struggle so hard anymore. I mean, there's got to be a black and white line. We have to know what true salvation is. Where am I? 13. 14. Let's go to 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask in according to his will, if we ask, don't go telling somebody that's still living a half-life, don't go telling them that if they ask anything, God will get No, the only thing that God's going to give them is salvation. That's the one only thing that they're gonna, he's going to deliver. They need salvation so that when you come into the family, whatever they ask, it says... If we ask anything according to his will, he what? Hears us. There's a sign right there. A Christian is actually heard by God. All them other prayers, tears, oh, God help me. God will help you run to his son. 
In his son comes a whole world of help. But they want to reach God without Jesus. They want to reach God through good works. They want to reach God by saying, I'm good. I don't steal nothing. I haven't done nothing. I'm good. How is a good God going to judge me that I'm a good person? Just watch and see. Keep on going the way that you are. You and your good self not going to make it in. You're going to be like, <laughs> yeah, dude, I tried to tell you. Man, this is serious. Man, I, I, I feel like I'm peeling off. I feel like I'm peeling off a scale of, of the church right now. So we're like, dude, we've been asleep. We've been tricked. We've been tricked. Someone's been saying something, and it's made us nullify these things instead of bringing them to the purity of what it is. Make sense? This is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, and he hears us, 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, well, this is simple. So now Christians know whatever we ask now, because he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. In other words, he's going to answer your prayers. If you're a Christian, he answers your prayers. This is the confidence. It said that. This is the confidence we have. If you're, if you're not sure about that, then you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that that spirit can come into you and will witness and say, that's right. When you pray, you're heard, Papa. When you pray, that God is answering your prayers, immediately going to it. Even though you don't see it, the Lord is working it out for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, it says. He's working it out. I remember one time somebody said that, man, you just prayed this and I didn't see nothing yet. He's working it out. Or he works for the good of those who are loving you, you understand? He's working it out. Just have patience. You'll see. And on that day, it'll be, I told you. <laughs> man, I love saying those. I'm about y'all. Don't y'all love saying those? Man, I told you. I told you. I said. That's what I'm going to do the day Jesus comes. Doo -doo, I told y'all. <laughs> yeah. Acting like a fool all this time. I knew what I was saying was true. Ready? Ready for some heaviness? Right here, verse 16. Ready? Here we go. If any man sees his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death. There is, though, a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Verse 17, all unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Now, because of you King Jamers, let's go to the Amplified and let's look at this. If you King James, that was a pretty heavy thing. Now, let, let's amplify this a little more. If anyone sees his brother, a brother means a believer, not an unbeliever, only a believer. If you don't see the fruit, that's not your brother. Okay? If anyone sees his brother, the believer, we're talking about a believer, committing a sin that does not lead to death, the extinguishing of life, he will pray and God will give him life. Yes, he will grant life to all of those whose sin is not one leading to death. But watch this. There is a sin that leads to death. I do not say that about, I do not say that one should pray for that. Verse 17. All wrongdoing is sin. And there is sin which does not involve death that may be repented of and forgiven. Yeah, right there. There are sins that lead to death. And there are sins that do not lead to death. 
through repentance and forgiveness. When an unbeliever sins, they are towards destruction, hell bound. There's no grace. But when we sin, grace abounds more through our repentance and we stand forgiven through Jesus Christ already. There's a difference there. Unbelievers don't have what you have. You need to stand on that confidence. When you sin, there's no pardoning of it. I don't care what you do. You go do 10 Hail Marys. I don't care what you do. You will not be pardoned of it. When I sin, we're pardoned through our repentance. When they sin and they repent, it still ain't no good. Because they haven't come to Jesus. When I sin and I repent, I'm forgiven. Forgotten everything. And I'm trying to show you, we got to get that, we got to get that back into the church. If you're not in, get in so you can receive these benefits, amen? Man, it's a good benefit package. This is the best insurance package I have been in in my life. I'm telling you right now. So you got to know that there's, there's, there is sin that leads to death, and then there's sin that doesn't lead to death. Man, this is good stuff. This is, this is New Testament. <laughs> I ain't even got to go to the Old Testament. This is New Testament right here. This is what needs to come back to the church. I don't know, man. Me and my wife have just had a burn in us on this. I think maybe, we are, maybe our honeymoon days are over now. You know what I mean? You know we're going to love you. We know you love us. Now let's get to the truth. We attracted you in with the love and all of this. Now we're going to get to the truth. You know what I mean? It has to end up there so that you will know your decision, so that you will know whenever you get to your eternal state of whatever it be, heaven or hell, you cannot say, I was not told. You don't want that on your head. You don't want people going to hell and they saying, you didn't tell me clearly. You made me think if I just say this Jesus and we were good, and I was like, okay, I guess we're good, you know. And, and they have no change in their life, and here's the Christian, yeah, man, you're saved, yeah, you said Jesus, yeah, yeah. And we're all noticing the life ain't there, but we're still, yeah, yeah, it'll come, it'll come, it'll come, your change will come. And I'm telling you, when I came to know Jesus, there was immediate change. I wasn't... I wasn't well developed, but there was a change, a progression of me wanting to be better. And that didn't come when I was 8 or 10 or 15. That came well into my life. I mean, I know, I know we could go back, you know, me and my dad, we talk about this, you know, I know we could go back and, you know, was you really saved then because you did? I did, I did, I believed in Jesus mentally, but I didn't know the Jesus that I know him now. I don't know. Maybe that's why the Lord was trying saving me. That's, maybe that's why I didn't die all those times that I should have died. Because I don't know if my little good works was enough, just my mental ascent and my good works of going to church. I don't know if that was enough. Y'all should be saying right now, eh. There ain't no good works, anybody getting into heaven with good works. You trying to do this and go helping people. The Lord won't judge, God won't judge me. I constantly give to people, do you know his son? It don't matter. If you don't know his son, it's worthless. Man, that's good stuff right there. Hallelujah. Let's end right here. Hebrews chapter 10, 25. I want to show you something. This message made me want to be even more holy. <laughs> it's like, man, this kind of message, I mean, it's like, man, I, can, I need to get rid of some more stuff in my life. I mean, I need to be above reproach. I need to be above reproach. Hallelujah. 10, 25, and 26. Hebrews 10, 25, and 26. 
Ready? Here we go. Not forsaking, or you can say do not forsake, or do not stop. Don't stop. That's what that means. Don't, not forsaking. Don't let go. Don't leave the assembling of ourselves together. You know, this is what we're doing right now. We're assembling. We're coming together. This is what it's called the church. It's coming together. The church is the body. is coming together. We're assembling. That says not forsaking. In other words, don't stop assembling with other believers. Where do believers assemble? We assemble in church. Period. Well, I go to their houses. Yeah, I know you go to their houses, but I ain't seen you in church yet because this is where things happen. I mean, it's one thing to go visit a believer and they're trying to minister you, but guess what that they're going to do in the end? Come to our church. Because <laughs> that's when you're really going to make a decision. This is what you're doing in our house? That's good. It looks like you're on an emotional thing. Come to church. Come to the assembly. Do it before people and the Lord will do something in your life. Man, this is serious, y'all. This should be defining... This should already start making it clear up. Okay, that means when we, what we did, golly, I'm speaking to somebody. That means whatever you did in that living room, if they didn't make it here, they still didn't make the full commitment. Not the full, that's why you didn't see. That's why they haven't changed. I'm talking to somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I'm telling you, what you did in the living room with them, it was a good start. God, I'm speaking by the Spirit. It was a good start. It, it seeded something. But it's not until you get them to assembly with us so they can make the commitment before the witnesses. Because we are the witnesses, the true witnesses of the family of God. You understand that? That's why you got to compel them. That's why they'll, they'll, they'll deal with your living room a little bit, but they won't come to the assembly. That's, a, that's too much. They'll deal with your living room. They'll deal with you in a restaurant a little bit. But bring them to the assembly where true conviction happens. When you got all these spirits lining up with God and the Lord's saying, there's my babies right there. And I see you coming in too. You want to be in or not? I mean, that's where real things happen. That's why it's so important. Assemble them. Compel them. Hey, come on to church. Come on. Ah, I don't know. Hey, come on to church. No, we already did it in your living room. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. That was just the beginning. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, come on. See, it's just the beginning. It's just a sign. And I know this is probably struggling in some of you, maybe even those listening online a little bit. You may be struggling because some of you have, may have made that decision in your bedroom. But if you didn't do it before the witnesses, if you didn't do it before the church, I'm telling you, Jesus makes it clear. It's got to be in the witnesses. If you're still rejecting church, true believers don't run from church. They run to it. They run to it. Not forsaking the assembly. Don't stop going assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Right? Some of us got it, right? I mean, some of us, we may miss, it, we may miss one Sunday, but you can see us back again because we know it doesn't feel right. My wife will take off on a Sunday and a Sunday morning, and there we are, you know, took off, and I go, Man, baby, doesn't it feel weird, you know? I ain't never seen that sun in about 10 or 11. I'm in the church. Sweating and doing whatever we need to do to get God to move in our lives. I don't know what it looks like out there at this time right now, to be honest with you. It's been a while. And when we're out there, it's just like, man, is it? you know, I see everybody looking, you know, thinking they're all right. Some are in the manner, some are in the manner of getting together. But what? It says, don't forsake the assembly of coming together as the manner of some is, but exhort one another. What does that mean? Exhort in. Encourage, come, encourage, get over here, encourage them. We should be filling these benches up. Don't you know how much better it is when you got more? I mean, how excited would you be if we just started filling up this whole thing because of people who were just like, man, look, I'll give you $10 if you come. I'll take you to Whataburger after whatever you want to do. Let's just get there. Come on. I, I see it in you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we'll go to Tia Rosa's, whatever. I mean, come on. Because you know there's something there. You know that there's, you know that they, if they get it, they'll get it. It's those ones that are teetering, right? 
Those are those ones you got to grab them by the hand, man. Just tell them whatever, man, whatever you can do. That's why, that's why, you know, at one time this church, it, 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 you could still see the old brown pews, you know, but man, it still had a lot of the old stuff on there and people would come in here like, man, it's old in here. And that's what I did. I put all the little lights in there just to kind of attract them so I can get them in here so that when they get here, they understand what happened. And then there's a real change. I'm telling you right now. I mean, we got to do whatever we can. Take them to lunch. Tell them, man, we'll go to lunch. We'll go do whatever. We'll go top golf. You know what I mean? Whatever you want to do. But come to church for a little bit. Just come for a little bit. You will not just sense something. That's what I'm talking about. We have to exhort one another to get in the habit of coming to church. Amen? I'm not talking about if you just miss a day or two here. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when your lifestyle is church. You know lifestyle, you're going to be there. There's a lifestyle about it. Amen? Okay, don't come, I'm not coming too hard. I don't, you know, I don't, want, I don't want y'all to feel condemnation or anything like that. Amen. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You see what that's in? In other words, you really need to go into church. You really need to be in there as the day is approaching. Do you know what he's talking about? The day? What's the day? When Jesus shows up. This scripture is basically saying, hey, don't ever think you can just not go to church. You need to be in church just like some of the others have the habit of being in church. And if they're not, you need to really exhort them to come in because you really need it now as the day is getting closer for Jesus to come. Amen? Man, it's good stuff. Is this good stuff? Man, I'm all kinds of convicted on the inside of me. Oh, my God. Things we got to change. Hallelujah. Verse 26. The last verse. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Man, this is hard. I know this is hard. If we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. You see why the urgency is on me? Man, that's, that's black and white right there. That keeps me from saying, oh, don't worry, y'all are saved, y'all are good. You said Jesus. I don't know how your lives, but y'all are fine. It's this kind of thing right here. It's these kind of scriptures right here that bring these kind of moments here where it's like, man, don't play the fence. If you don't want to be in, stop acting like a sheep. Go be a wolf. If you don't want to be a grape tree, go be a thorn bush. Go be a thorn bush or whatever, but don't try to act like a grape tree. You understand? I mean, there's got to be a clear definition, and we the Christians have to make that clear. We have to make those things clear. The line has to be there. That way there's no uh, misunderstanding. We don't want any misunderstanding. Three things. I wrote down three thoughts here. Three things that are evidence that you're saved. One, you have abandoned all hope in the flesh. Three things that came while we were reading this. this. This is a sign of a Christian. You've abandoned all hope in your own abilities to be successful. You've abandoned that thought. You know that your only hope and your only anchor is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, that's believers right there. Right, you know what I'm saying? That's believers right there. If something moved in you right there, that's because that's you're saved. Something moved in you. Oh, that's right, Lord. That's right. You're the only thing. I've abandoned all that other stuff. Oh, man, I'm going to tell you that. I know what I'm talking about because I've abandoned a lot of things, y'all. I've done some ugly, stupid things. Things that I would never even bring up to people. I've done some dumb, nasty things. 
But I'm telling you, when you can say I've abandoned it all, though, there's a power to that. That's the sign of a, 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 a true salvation. You've abandoned all hope in the flesh. A second sign. You have a new relationship with sin. It's a new kind of relationship. It ain't never going to go away, right? Not until Jesus returns, right? Because that means you're a liar if you say you don't sin. You know what I mean? We already know what the word says. You have a new relationship with sin. And it's through something called confession. I look up the word confession in the Greek, and it's homog uh, homogleo, homogleo, homologeo, homologeo, confession, homologeo. You know what that means? I looked it up, and it says to speak the same thing. Let me tell you what's not confession, not speaking the same. Lord, I confess all my sins in a one lump sum. I confess all my sins and I confess everything and I just give it all to you. This is what confession looks like. Lord, that word I said yesterday to this person, I said this and I repent of that. You speak the same thing. If you don't know how to do true confession where you're talking, don't, don't wrap it up in one thing and make it seem like, no, that's still like a scapegoat. You understand? I was ugly to this person. They did not deserve that. And you speak the same thing. I was ugly to you, and I did not deserve that. You see, you're speaking the same thing that, of, the committing, of the error that was committed. You understand? That's confession. I'm ugly or whatever. Speaking the same thing. It, it ain't no good. Have you ever had someone come up to you and try to say, well, look, I'm sorry for that thing I did yesterday. No, 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 no. You, you can keep that, I'm sorry. You can keep that. And then with the attitude, nah, dude, you ain't sorry about nothing. Keep that. That ain't confession. Confession is speaking that very thing with, with understanding and I said this, this, this. And then you go to that person. I said this, this, this. It's, 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 it's speaking the same thing. That's confession. That's the new relationship with sin. When you sin, you confess your sins to one another, and you shall be healed. It says confess your sins to one another. You know what's interesting about that scripture? It didn't say, confess your sins to God, and you shall be healed. It didn't say that, did it? Oh, there's a lot of people confessing to God, and God's like, why are you talking to me, man? You, believe, you know what I mean? You didn't sin against, you sin against them. Go talk to them. Go tell them your confession. Go confess to them and speak exactly what, what was done, and you'll get healed. Oh, man, I'll tell you what, it's the hardest thing, but it's the most that's the second, the second sign of a believer. It's a new relationship with sin through a thing called confession. We don't bottle it up anymore. We confess it, we give it up. We speak the same thing. And number three, you want to be around other believers. That's the signs right there. It could be many of them, but those are three that, that really just, just rang out in You'll want to be with other believers. If you don't want to be with other believers, you're not in. Something's not right. When you're in the family, you want to be with the family. When you don't feel like you're with the family, you don't want to be with the family. If you've been tricked that you're not part of the family, you won't want to be with the family. But if someone tells you, bro, come on, you're in. You're in. Make the decision that makes you family. You'll draw to it because you know there's, 
There's camaraderie there. You know there's understanding. We all come from a hardness of life. We all come from all kinds of walks, ups and downs. We all know what it means to confess our sin. We all know that what that means, that, that embarrassing, ridiculous moment. Isn't it? We know what that means. I've been there. That's why you have to have that compel on you. Three things. Abandon your hope in the flesh. Have a new relationship with sin through confession. And three, hang around other believers. Let's stand up. needs to make a real decision. A real decision. This is a real deal. I'm not talking about that halfway anymore. No more halfway walking. Somebody here is feeling that right there. Like, I know, I know, but I don't want to go up to the front. I promise you, if you don't come up to the front, it's just like nothing. No more halfway. God bless you. Come on. Come on. No more halfway walking. Amen? This is the real deal. I can sense the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. Amen. No shame. There's no shame there. We've all been there, right? Some of you still need to come up. We've all been there. No shame. This is decision time. Amen. I've been where every one of you had. I had to go to that moment where I'm like, you know what, man? I have been, I've been playing both sides. Not today. Not no more. Not no more. Not no more. Come on, there's more time. Anybody, this, this is where this is where the rubber meets the road. We're done with the halfway done with halfway. This is the deal. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, send your hands up to the front. This is, this, this is killing the flesh right here. This is what you call abandoning the flesh right here. Every one of these people right here. This is what you call abandoning the flesh in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I anoint you in Jesus' name, Father. Fill them, Lord, Father, right there. Fire, fire, I can sense it right there in the name of Jesus. Yes, Father, fill them, Lord, with the Holy Ghost, Father. He'll never be the same again. No more halfway in the name of Jesus. All the way in the family right here in Jesus' name. Right there, I can sense it. And there's a fire on you right there in the name of Jesus. Heat them up, Lord. That's the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, decision time right here. No more halfway. Man, you're hot, hallelujah. You just got the heat of the Lord on you. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, give me some oil. We need to anoint him. There's some oil around here. Give me some oil. It says anoint them. Let the elders of the church anoint them. All sins, it says they'll be healed and all sins will be forgiven. Jesus name amen anoint your hands elders anoint your hands it says that all sins will be forgiven it says that James chapter 5 doesn't it say that it says you'll be healed and even their sins will be forgiven today your sins are forgiven today in Jesus name we anoint you with that oil your sins are forgiven today they're forgiven they're forgiven hallelujah you're free hallelujah you're free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Raise your hands. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Raise your hands. Be thankful to the Lord for what he has done. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Man, I wish I could see him up here right here. Man, that's what you did. Salvation. Real salvation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Real salvation in Jesus' name. Real salvation. Man, salvation. Put your hands up. Salvation. Give it all to the Lord. Everything. Father, no more halfway. No more half and half, Lord. That's it. We're done. I can almost hear your spirit crying out. I'm done with it. I'm done being over here and being over here. I don't want to do that no more. I can hear your spirit just crying out to that. Just like that. Give it to the Lord. Father, I commit myself to you alone. Say, I abandon myself. I die to myself. I raise up a new person today. The old me is on the cross. 
the new me resurrects with Jesus. Say, Jesus, resurrect me. Bring me to life. In Jesus' name, all your sin be forgiven in the name of Jesus. Sins be forgiven in the name of Jesus. No longer tie those old things. Don't think about them no more. I can hear the Lord saying, don't bring them back up anymore. They're forgotten in the sea of forgetfulness in the name of Jesus. No more. No more. That sin don't identify you anymore. Don't even think about it. Don't even bring it up anymore. The Lord has forgotten about in the sea of forgetfulness, you are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come in the name of Jesus. You receive the new you right there. The new you right there. Never be the same again. Never. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Let's have some more of that old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many times have you come here? times oh one for the father the son and the holy spirit <laughs> completed today it completes your salvation completes right here don't let a devil ever tell you you're not saved anymore you're not going to go to church i mean you're not going to you're not going to be successful you ain't going to be no good don't ever let anybody tell you that you are in the father's hands right now do you understand you can be touched by no devil and you can't be touched by no human testimony Whatever is in your past is forgotten. Do you understand? This starts the new you. Father, in Jesus' name, I lay my hands, Father, on her, and I anoint her, Father, for the forgiveness of sins. All sins forgiven. Detach from those sins right now in the name of Jesus. I just feel like saying that. Detach yourself. Detach yourself. Like an old skin ripping off and the new one coming in. Hallelujah. Detach yourself from all that past in the name of Jesus. It's no longer you. Detach yourself from the word curses, the hurts, and the pains. Detach yourself from the old life. You are a new creation. The old is gone, it says. The new has come. I want you to think your old you dying on the cross with Jesus. Think of the old you hanging there. Let her die. Let her die. Let her die. I can just hear that a new you wants to come out and flourish like a new flower, like a flower in the desert, Lord, where nobody thought any flower could come up, Father. A new flower is going to come up right here in Jesus' name, Father. Oh, Father, her forgiveness of sins has been accomplished here. You are clean and as white as snow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You sense that? Hallelujah. salvation right there that's real salvation real salvation oh alma oh alma oh father no more alma this is it there's no no more back and forth this is this is it you know too much I can hear it in my spirit. You know too much. This is it. This has to be it right here. You know too much. You know what needs to be done. You know that I've called you. You know. You know the position that I put you in. You are a leader. You are a Deborah of your home. And you're running from that. You know that. I have assigned you to be the leader. This is no more about he or she. No, let it be him. Let it be him. Let it be her. Let, let them. I don't want to be the one. No, it's you. It's you. I can hear the Lord saying, it's you. You're the one. No more. No more. No more. Say, Father, I commit my life to you. Say, I abandon myself. Everything. 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 And I give it to you. Jesus, there you go, right there, there you go, see, something does that, that's the Lord that wants to raise your hands, hallelujah, see that, that's the Lord that wants to raise your hands, 
Raise them a little higher so you can beat the flesh right there. Raise them a little higher to really get the flesh out in the name. Abandon yourself today. Yes, the Lord loves you. Oh, he's got a call over your life. He's got a call over your life. Golly, total abandonment. Here you go. Here you go right there. Yes. Let it go out. Yes, abandonment right here in the name of Jesus. Here you go there. Here you go. Hallelujah. 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 More, 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 more. There's more. 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 There you go. Oh. There you go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Love on her, Lord. Love on her, Father. Oh, hallelujah. No more playing the middle anymore, amen? You're going to be different. The Lord tells me in your school, the Lord's saying in your school, he's showing me something in your school. There's something in your school where you're battling a little bit. You want to go back a little bit and then maybe not. And you go back right there. The Lord is saying right here, the decision is made. Right here, you will not be the same in your school again. You are going to go back to your school a different person. And I'm telling you right now, some students will make fun of you, some, but they don't know any better, okay? I'm telling you that right now. They don't know any better. They don't know that you have the real light. It's you that has the light in the darkness for your school right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray an empowerment over her to take your Holy Ghost back to her school. In the name of Jesus, Father. I pray, Father, over her, Father, a boldness in Jesus' name, Father. A boldness, Father. Anoint her, Father, with a boldness, Father. Anoint her with a boldness in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, yes, raise them up, Lord, the young people, Lord. Raise them up, Father, the young people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now receive that in me. Huh? Praise the Lord. Just give the Lord thanks. Give the Lord thanks. Me, huh? A new you is here. Me, huh? A new you in Jesus' name. I really love this one. <laughs> oh, you've been hurt. Oh, the Lord says, I want to heal that hurt inside you. I want to heal that hurt inside you, says the Lord. What you've been feeling today is love. That's why you can't stop crying. Your heart is starting to love again. <laughs> I can see it right now. Your heart is starting to love again. Love is penetrating your heart now. To love, to love on people. To give people the real you, the God you. Father, I declare a woman of God right here, Lord. I rebuke a spirit of rejection on this life in the name of Jesus. A spirit of rejection, I rebuke you out of this life in the name of Jesus. She is now loved and accepted and can feel love and can produce love. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Father. You can say, Jesus. I make you my Lord and Savior. Say, I confess my sins and I receive my forgiveness. Say, I believe you're the Son of God and I will live my life accordingly. Say, I abandon myself and I give it all to you. In Jesus' name. Raise your hand. Would you like to receive the Holy Spirit? Father, in the name of Jesus, baptize her. Baptize her. Baptize her. Baptize her. Wow. Baptize her, Lord. Oh, the inner witness, Lord. 
baptize her, Lord. Hallelujah. In the Holy Ghost, baptize her, Lord. Oh, the Jesus baptism, in the name of Jesus, baptize her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the inner witness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Now that's a beautiful smile. Beautiful smile. That was the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. How are you doing, baby? Not great, tell me. What's going on? going to take the church. Everyone extend your hands this way. She's dealing with emotions, lack of motivation, thoughts. Anybody know what it feels like? Let's pray grace over her life. That is, that's demonic activity is really what that is. That's the devil. It's demonic. I'm not saying you have the devil, but that's the devil. You know what I mean? Lack of motivation. All over the place. You're on a high place, and then the next day you're, you're in a down place. And then the next place you're in a high place. You feel good. You feel happy. And then the next place you just want to be in your room by yourself. That right there, that's demonic activity. Would you like to receive Jesus as your Savior? Say, say, Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. I confess my sins. Is there anything that you would like to confess specifically? Anything come to mind right there? The Holy Spirit speaking to her mind with a verse. Anybody you need to forgive? The one thing the Lord is saying, there's one thing. If you can get that out of you, that's what that's going to do. The healing of you. you of that right there in the name of Jesus. I release you of that right now. I release you of that. Devil, take your hands off her right now in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off that mind in the name of Jesus. She is healed by the confession, Father. By the confession, the beautiful, holy confession, Lord. Holy confession, Lord. Healing over this life in Jesus' name. Say, I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I confess my sins. I receive your salvation today in Jesus' name. Would you like to see the Holy Spirit? Raise your hands like you're getting a gift from the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I baptize her in the Holy Ghost, Father. I baptize her, Father, as a minister, as a minister today, Lord. I baptize her in the Holy Spirit. The inner witness will now be inside you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. It's an empowerment. It's an empowerment, Lord. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. More, Father. More, Father. More, Father. More, Father. Yeah. More, Father. Yeah, you go. More, Father. More, Lord. Oh, let love come on into you. Love is coming into your heart right now. There's love coming into your heart. Hallelujah. A lot of love is coming into your heart. You're loved, Miha. You're loved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are loved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beautiful smile. Beautiful smile. Amen. How are we doing? Come on, baby. Right here, Miha. Working with you, huh? Yeah, 
I can sense it right now. Let it out. Just let your tears out. It's a way. There you go. Don't fight it. Just let it out. There you go. Don't fight it. That's a way of coming out. Father, in the name of Jesus, bring it up. Bring all that up. Bring it up right now, Father. Bring all that conviction up, Father. Bring it all up right now out of her, Father. Bring it out in the name of Jesus. Even if you feel like yelling, uh, just say it in the name of Jesus. Whatever you got to do, get it out of your body. Get it out of your mind in the name of Jesus. Devil, get off of her mind in the name of Jesus. Get off of her life in the name of Jesus. She's more than a conqueror. She's beautiful. She's precious in the name of Jesus. Devil, get off of her life in the name of, there you go, Mia. Get off of her life. Get off of her life in the name of Jesus. Get off of her life. Bring it up, Miha. Bring it up. Bring it up. More, more, Miha. There you go. Bring it out in the name of Jesus. Release that. Give it to Jesus, Miha. Release that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Oh, no more. 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 Say, Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. Say, you're my master. Say, I abandon my life and I give it all to you. Today, say, in front of all these people, say, in front of all these people, I do it today, Lord. Say, I belong to you and I'm in the family now. In Jesus' name, there you go. Right there, go on in. Go on in, Lord. Go on in, Father. Go on in. Go on in, Lord. Heal her, Lord. Heal the heart, Father. Heal the heart, Father. Heal the heart. Hallelujah. Heal the heart. Hallelujah. Heal the heart, Father. In Jesus' name. I pray an anointing over you to take this back to your schools in the name of Jesus. I pray an anointing over you to take this back to your friends in the name of Jesus. A boldness. They'll see something different in you. Just walk in it. Walk in the boldness. Hallelujah. You got the fire of the Lord on you. Wow. Wow. My gosh. My gosh. Man, that's Jesus. Man. That's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go minister right there. Minister right there. Yeah. Yeah. Fire of the Holy Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. My chains are gone. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say we thank you, Lord. Say we have true salvation. Say we have true salvation. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Let's sing the last song, the last one. My chains are gone. My chains are gone. Let's sing that one. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My chains are gone. My sin set free. Put the words up there. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Sing it. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Yes, say it, unending love. There you go. Sing it again. My chains are gone. Sing it again. My chains are gone. I've been set free. Yes, Lord, sing it loud. Yeah, Holy 
Holy Ghost, move. Holy Spirit, move in this place. And like a flood, His mercy, His mercy unending love. Let's sing it one more time. Just sing it to the Lord. Sing it to the Lord like you really done it. My chains are gone. My sins have free. Yeah, sing it louder. My God, my Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. Right there. Do it again. Do it again. Sing it louder, my chains. My chains are Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Sing it like a flood. Unending love. That's the love that's towards you. Amazing. Sing it again. Unending love. Unending love. Sing it about two or three more times. Amazing. Unending love. We are so loved by the Father. Unending love. Unending love for you. Amazing. Right here, right here. Let's sing it right here. Unending love. Amazing. Father, as we leave this place, Lord, Father, we leave blessed and we leave changed forever because we've heard the true gospel today, Lord. The true gospel that has power to save, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, I pray that these words be imprinted in every believer today, Lord. That they take this intensity with them, Lord. When they preach the gospel, that they preach this intensity, Father, a clear line, Lord, so clear decisions can be made and power can come back, Father, to the church. I bless everyone here, Father. I bless everyone here. In Jesus' name I pray. The church says. The church says. The church says. Amen. We're dismissed. Hallelujah. You can go, you're dismissed.